Okay, finally, I'm going to talk about set notation. So this is just another way of expressing the set of um, solutions for the uh, inequalities. Um, I know a lot of people really struggle with this concept of set notation. I didn't actually find it too bad. It's basically just learning a new language. Um, but when you get enough practice here, it becomes um, really easy, um, I think. So just uh, a few rules. First of all, you put everything in these brackets that look a bit like this. Uh, there might be a better representation of it in the book if you want to look at that and the way that you want to draw it. And then in set notation, a colon is equal to when. And then this sort of U looking shape is equal to or. And this sort of N looking shape is equal to to and, although uh, you'll find that you don't really need to use the kind of the n looking shape and the and, uh, which I'll explain in a sec. Um, so the way I remember the difference between the uh, the or and the and is the and one looks like an n, and and has an n in it. So n and and, and then that was made it quite easy to remember. And I was able to remember that u is the uh, the or one, and that's um, uh, kind of quite easy in order to remember in my head. Um, so this probably doesn't make much sense on its own, so we'll do an example. Um, so let's write in set notation that 3 is less than x. So the way we do this is, first of all, we open a bracket like this, and then we say x is a solution when 3 is less than x, and then we close the bracket like this. And that is how you uh, put three is less than x in uh, set notation. Let's do another one. Let's do that minus one over five is less than x. Well, the way you do this is again, you open a bracket and then you say that x is a solution when minus one over five is less than x. And then you close the bracket. Let's take another example. Let's do minus two is less than x and x is less than or equal to 13 over 2. So there are two ways that you can write this. The first way you can write this is by saying, open bracket, x is a solution when minus 2 is less than x, and then close bracket. And then you do and, and you do the n symbol, x is a solution when x is less than or equal to 13 over 2. And then you close bracket. Now, I said before that the and thing I think is pretty um, um, pointless. I don't think you really need to learn it or because um, I never use it. Because there's a second way that you can write this is instead you can write this as open bracket. x is a solution when x is more than minus 2, but is less than or equal to 13 over 2. And you can just write the set notation like that, and that's a perfectly acceptable answer as well. And that's a lot easier to understand and remember for me. I always write it like that. So in some ways, there's not really any point of uh, kind of using the n or the and here, because there's always going to be um, another way that you can write it without it. Um, let's do one more example. Let's do the or example from before. x is bigger than 4 or 2 is bigger than x. So the way we do this is we're going to open a bracket and say x is a solution when x is bigger than 4 or we write this u looking sign x is a solution when 2 is bigger than x and then we close the bracket. Um, now, as I said before, the kind of the or questions are not that prominent. However, this sign here, the kind of you looking sign for or, is very important when it comes to quadratic inequalities, um, which I'll explain in the next video. So you definitely need to learn that. But that's pretty much everything with set notation. What you'll find is, I'll explain it in the next video more, I'll kind of do more examples, is that the more and more you do it, the more and more you'll get used to it. Okay, here's a question on linear inequalities and set notation. So pause the video, have a go, and I'll go for the answer in about five seconds. Okay, so a couple of you may have noticed that there is no and or or here. And a few of you might be a bit confused about how you um, treat this question then. 
uh, is it in the AND variety or the OR variety? Well, the key is this BOTH up here. It wants you to find the set of values that satisfy both of the inequalities. Therefore, that will tell you that it is technically an AND question um, where you need to find the solutions when both of the inequalities are true at the same time. So remember to read the whole question and therefore you'll be able to um, find that part because they could word it in that way. Instead of saying AND, they could say satisfy both. So we're going to approach this um, as the same way we always do, where we solve the um, the two inequalities separately first. So let's start with minus x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 1. So minus x will be greater than or equal to minus 1 if we bring the plus 2 onto the other side. And we divide everything by minus 1 to get x and then 1 on this side. And then remember we'll flip the inequality sign because we're divided by negative or divided by negative 2 get that x is less than or equal to 1. We solve the second um, inequality, which is 6x plus 11 is greater than 2x plus 1. We'll bring the 2x onto the other side to get 4x plus 11 is greater than 1. And then we'll get, if we bring the 11 onto the other side, 4x is greater than minus 10. And then divide everything by 4 to get x is greater than minus 10 over 4, which is minus 5 over 2. So these are your two separate inequalities. Um, and I'm going to do it by my method, although if you want to do it the number line method, that's fine. So x is less than or equal to 1, and x is greater than minus 5 over 2. I'm going to get both of the um, inequality signs to go the same direction. So x is less than or equal to 1, and x is greater than minus 5 over 2. Remember that these two things here are the exact same. And then we can merge this to get that minus 5 over 2 um, is less than x, but x is less or equal to 1. And that is the solution there to the question.